Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents What Do Egyptian Mummies Smell Like? Read by Miranda Wilson Abstract There are lots of things to see in museums. Some museums even have things you can touch or hear, but not many museums have things you can smell. Smells from museum artifacts can provide a lot of information. They can tell us what artifacts are made of, how they are preserved, and what condition they are in. We wanted to know what ancient Egyptian mummified bodies smelled like. We analyzed air samples from nine ancient Egyptian mummified bodies. We used trained volunteers and chemical analyses to identify smells. We found that mummified bodies smelled woody, spicy, and sweet. Smells were more intense for mummified bodies in display cases. We also saw similarities between mummified bodies from the late period, 664 to 332 BCE. We can use this technique to help us conserve and preserve museum artifacts in the future. Introduction. Have you ever been to a museum and seen a sarcophagus? Sometimes they have mummified bodies inside. Mummified bodies from ancient Egypt are fascinating. They can show us what ancient civilizations were like. They can tell us things about people's health and their religious practices. Mummified bodies are also known as mummies. We use this term in our title. However, researchers prefer to use the term mummified bodies. This is to show that a mummy was a person and helps us remember to treat them with respect. The transition into the afterlife was very important in ancient Egypt. This required preservation of the person's body. This process is called mummification. The process uses a lot of natural materials. For example, they used resin and oils from pine, cedar, and juniper trees. They also used bitumen, spices, herbs, and waxes. These materials can have strong smells, and it was important to smell good for the afterlife. Unfortunately, studying mummified bodies is hard. They are old and many are in bad condition. Scientists also need to be aware of ethical and cultural concerns for dead bodies. Ideally, we should study mummified bodies non-invasively, without even touching the body. One way to do this is by exploring what mummified bodies smell like. Smells can give us lots of information about museum artifacts. They can help identify what artifacts are made from. They can help track down how materials break down over time. They can even help discover what was done to conserve and restore artifacts. We had several questions. What do ancient Egyptian mummified bodies smell like? Can we tell what materials were used in the mummification process? How much have the bodies broken down? How were they preserved? So, we explored the smells of mummified bodies from Egyptian museum collections. Methods. We examined nine mummified bodies from the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Four were in display cases and five were in storage. They were from different time periods. They were also made of different materials and they had different preservation histories. We did two analyses. One, smell analysis. We created a set of 13 descriptions of smells. These were things like woody, sweet, and floral. Then we trained five volunteers and, along with three trained panelists, we assessed these smells and their intensity. They also rated if the smell was pleasant or not. We collected air from around the mummified bodies or from their display sarcophagi. Then we had the volunteers sniff the air and identify what they smelled. Two, compound analysis. We use gas chromatography olfactory mass spectrometry instruments to help us. First, gas chromatography separates an air sample into individual compounds. Air that contains each compound is then split into two streams. One stream goes to the mass spectrometer. This helps identify the compounds. At the same time, the other stream goes to a trained human sniffer. They describe the smell, intensity, and pleasantness of each compound. We can then match the compound with what it smells like. We use this process for air collected from all nine of our mummified bodies. Here in figure one, you can see in A, 
sampling air from around a mummified body. You can see two researchers vacuuming out air from the sarcophagus and storing it in a plastic bag for analysis. And in B, you can see instruments used for gas chromatography, olfactometry, mass spectrometry, compound analysis. The instruments separate the compounds at the same time a trained human sniffer smells them through the nose cone. On the left of the image are the instruments. On the right, a person sits directly in front of the nose cone. Results. We found that mummified bodies mostly smelled pleasant. The most common smells volunteers identified were woody, 78%, spicy, 67%, and sweet, 56%. They also sensed big differences in smell intensity. We found that the overall smell of the mummified bodies wasn't always the same as the individual compounds. Using our instruments, we found that smells were more intense from mummified bodies in display cases. We also saw that mummified bodies from the late period, 664 to 332 BCE, had similar smells. We found that smells came from four different things. Materials used during mummification and when bodies broke down, microbes, oils to prevent pests, and synthetic pesticides. Here in figure two, you can see the smell profiles for three of the mummified bodies. Smells further from the center are more intense. Each mummified body is represented by a colored dot, green, purple, and yellow. The arrow points outward from the center, showing the direction that the smells intensify. Starting at the top, 12 a.m. on a clock face, and working in a clockwise direction, the smells are spicy, woody, moldy, stale or rancid, sweet, ethereal, resin-like, citrus-like, floral, dusty or dry, herbal, incense-like, and smoky. Looking at the figure, which smells were most intense for this group of mummified bodies? Which smell was the most common? Discussion. We can learn a lot by smelling mummified bodies. Our compound analysis gave us extra insights. For example, we found a lot of terpenoid compounds. These come from plants used during mummification. Mummified bodies from the same time period also have similar smells. More samples might let us use smells to figure out how old mummified bodies are. We were surprised to find synthetic pesticides. Their use wasn't recorded in any conservation reports. Examining the smells of museum artifacts is not very common, but it can help us be safe when we work with artifacts. Smells caused by fats breaking down or by microbes can tell us when mummified bodies decompose. This could help scientists better store and wrap mummified bodies. We can also protect museum workers by identifying pesticides or other toxic compounds. And our methods ensure that we can do this non-invasively. Smell is an important part of human sensory perception. Smelling something can make interactions with ancient artifacts more significant. This can make museums more interesting and informative. In the future, we would like to make smells closely resembling those of ancient Egyptian mummified bodies. Future museum goers will be able to experience the smells of mummification. Conclusion. Do you have a favorite smell? For humans, we use sight and touch more than smell. But smell is an important part of our sensory perception. It can tell us that dinner is ready or if there is a fire. Next time you go somewhere new, try to use your sense of smell. What do you smell? Are there strong smells? How do the smells make you feel? You might be surprised at what you notice. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the Journal of the American Chemical Society, published on February 13, 2025. Research conducted by Mattia Sterlich, Emma Powellin, Abdel Razak Enagar, Ali Abdel Halim, and others from the Heritage Science Laboratory Ljubljana at the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia and from the Egyptian Museum of Cairo in Egypt. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF.
please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources. Hey everyone, we're a small nonprofit and all of our resources are free. So if you like what you see, please subscribe and share.